what's up what's good it's your girl McKay Jane here back with another quick little video and today we are going to be talking about reading and I'm going to be sharing with you guys my fall slash winter TBR I finally found a good group of Christmas books that I want to read so I want to share them with you most of these books well all of these books are said to be pretty close to clean most of them should be closed door that is what I look for specifically that is the only thing that I like to and enjoy reading these days so I want to compile a list of books that should be that but Christmas edition so that's what I'm gonna be sharing with you guys in this video so in the month of November and December these are the books that I plan to hope to get to first I recently downloaded a whole bunch of books because there was another like free Christian book day or whatever I still haven't got my Kindle subscription but I'm probably about to have to get it because the books that they want me to read for book club this month I can't find it nowhere it is pretty new and I don't want to buy it so I'm gonna have to get the Kindle Unlimited one month free subscription read it real quick and then see if I want to continue the subscription. The first book that I plan to read for winter is All's Fair in Love and Christmas. This one is by Sarah Monzen. It says two workplace rivals, one festive competition, and a romance that upends it all. Every December two things are guaranteed for graphic designer Mackenzie Graham, Christmas celebrations, and the annual promotion at her workplace. Those two things are by no means mutually exclusive. In fact, the better an employee is at harnessing the Christmas spirit, the more likely they'll win the new job. With her social anxiety and Mackenzie never thought she will be a contender in the company's holiday competition. So how exactly has she found herself dueling her workplace crush with wrapping paper tubes and using tinsel as a weapon of choice for a much needed race? Jeremy Fletcher's life is meticulously planned out including how to win this year's promotion at work. Not only will the new position fulfill some of his career goals but as a single guardian to his twin niece and nephew he needs his salary increase to support his family. Jeremy has barely noticed Mackenzie Graham around the office but now that she's his rival he can't stop thinking about her. Her quirkiness intrigues him and he's afraid that if he can't get his head on straight the promotion isn't the only thing he'll end up losing to Mackenzie. Ooh, that sounds good. So that's going to be workplace romance, rivals, maybe enemies to lovers a little bit. Not really because it sounds like Mackenzie already likes him but he had no recollection of her because she seems pretty shy so this one sounds really good it's only 256 pages that's a good amount that's a good amount i've never read anything else by this author so i'm very very intrigued by this one we're gonna see how that goes okay okay so the next book is i believe a classic author it is jenny bayless and by classic i mean a lot of people like her christmas romance books i think she comes out with one like every year she even has a new one for this year but they said this one is really good and it should be pretty clean it is the 12 dates of Christmas so it says when it comes to relationships 34 year old Kate Turner is ready to say bye humbug the sleepy town of Blexford England isn't ooh I don't know if I'm like this one isn't exactly brimming with prospects and anyway Kate found fulfillment in her career as a designer and in her delicious side job baking for her old friend Matt's neighborhood cafe but then her friend signs her up for a dating agency that promises to help singles find love for the holidays 23 days until Christmas 12 dates with 12 different men the odds must finally be in her favor right yet with each new date more disastrous than the one before and the whole town keeping tabs on her misadventures kate must remind herself that sometimes love shows up where it's least expected and maybe just maybe it's been right under her nose all along like i said we'll see whenever it comes to books that set in a different country sometimes it's hard for me to connect that's why i say oh england i don't know because sometimes their words and their verbiage is a little bit different than ours i do like to expand my mind though so i'm gonna give it a chance because a lot of people like jenny bayless so i'm gonna definitely let you you guys know if I end up reading this one but it is 368 pages that's super long for me I ain't read one that long in a hot little minute the next book is definitely clean and it is a Kindle book it's actually a prime reading book and it is single all the way by Kate Watson it is a romantic comedy and it says when a secret billionaire and his obnoxiously pretty upstairs neighbor get stuck together on an elevator, their sparks could light a Christmas tree. Juliet, I go through crushes faster than a kid goes through presents on Christmas morning. But when I crash into my annoyingly hot nemesis and we get stuck on the elevator during a blackout, the last thing I expect is to develop feelings for him. Nate Cruz is opinionated, a stickler for justice, talks with his hands, it is the space heater keeping me safe while we're stuck on this freezing metal box. He's also the first person to ever push past my defense mechanisms and see me as more than the girl who messes up everything that my family sees and when the blackout ends and we're back in the real world he's the first person to ever stand up to my family for me now that I've fallen for Nate, I'm determined not to mess up things with him and I know exactly how we'll fake the date to get through the holidays because a fake relationship can't leave me heartbroken on Christmas right 
name. Juliet Ship is the loudest, most obnoxiously pretty upstairs neighbor in the world. But after six hours on the elevator with her, I'm fighting feelings deeper than I'm willing to admit. And after the power is restored and she manages to drag me to my apartment and give me my insulin shot, I'm all in. When Jules suggests I come to her identical twins wedding as her fake date, I agree but only if she comes to my ultra ambitious parents holiday party as my real one. Because I know the truth she's too scared to admit. She isn't faking and I'll do everything I can to help her realize it. All I want for Christmas is Jules. Okay so that was a super long synopsis. You know how I feel about that. She definitely gave too much away. But it sounds cute. I don't know how many pages it is exactly. But a lot of people like Kate Watson books and I know for sure it's going to be clean so it's a safe read for me. So so I'm probably definitely going to read it. I already downloaded it so it's a must but that did tell me a lot. So it's probably going to be like enemies to lovers and fake dating which you know how I feel about lying but we're going to see how it goes. If it's done right I'll like it. The next book I have is A Husband for Christmas by Amanita Kute. I think that's how you pronounce it. This is an author of color and I have read two of her previous books and I love them so hopefully this one is just as good. It says can you find true love while pretending to be someone else. Mackenzie Porter is at a crossroads after a humiliating encounter with her handsome boss Cameron. She agrees to a twin switch with her sister Madison for the holidays to escape her embarrassment. Cameron Grant is shaken out of his comfortable routine when his favorite hostess resigns. In an out of character move he tracks her down to see if he can coax her back. Things get complicated when Cameron falls for Mackenzie. Can he convince Mackenzie that he loves her for real or will she believe he's falling for her twin? Ooh. This is another clean Christian romance. This came out in 2023 and it's only 174 pages short and sweet so it's not going to be a long read for me at all I can probably knock that out in a day I'm excited for this one it sounds pretty good it's giving like the holiday switch she's trying to switch with her twin probably like a little miscommunication trope okay so the next book that I plan to read is Finding Faith by B.E. Baker. This is another author that I've never heard of, but it is a clean Christian romance. It says, when Mary's mom walked out on them, her dad started drinking and never stopped. The one bright spot in her miserable childhood was a charity called Sub for Santa. It restored her faith in magic and brought hope and love into their home. She's run the program as an adult for nearly a decade to bring the same joy to children all over Atlanta. When the same man's name pops up on both the donor and the recipient list she's a little frustrated how can she figure out where he belongs without hurting his feelings and after making the trek out to his address she's prepared to mark down recipient it's a trailer park after all but when he answers the door it's the ridiculously handsome polished man she met last week he's also the first man she's agreed to go on a date with in more than a year he definitely doesn't need anyone to bring his children christmas gifts who travels to work hits the trailer. But Mary made a vow to herself long ago that she would never have children. She didn't want to risk being like her parents. Mm. She knows she needs to walk away, but he has two beautiful children after all. But Luke doesn't make it easy. Can Mary find enough faith in herself to do something she never thought possible? 363 pages, that's a long one, but that sound good. This came out in 2018. It is a clean Christian romance and that sounds good. What they got going on? That sounds like a story right there. That sounds good. I've never read anything by B.E. Baker but I'm interested and on Apple Books they gave it four and a half stars out of five. So that sounds good. Very excited about that one. I might try to read that one first. Okay next up I have Rhett. Just Rhett. That's just the name of it by Liz Isaacson. This is another clean romance author right here. Let's read the description. It says Rhett has been in Three Rivers for a year relying on the foster sisters next door as he rebuilds his ranch after a devastating tornado. I think I've read books in this world before with like the Three Rivers Ranch and I've reviewed it. He shares a special bond with Evelyn Foster, the mastermind behind a successful matchmaking service for local women. But there's always a boyfriend in the way of Rhett confessing his hidden feelings for his best friend. Evelyn's matchmaking business thrives on her ability to help cowboys see the women of the small town of Three Rivers standing right in front of them. However, her credibility takes a hit as her own relationships keep falling apart. Desperate to save her business, Evelyn devises a bold plan that requires Rex's help. She proposes a fake marriage. Dang, they went from fake dating to fake engagement to a whole fake marriage. Hoping it will restore faith in her matchmaking skills. So to restore faith, she plans to lie about her marriage. Isn't that something? Rhett agrees, of course, thinking that this could be just the thing he needs to get out of the friend zone as they navigate their pretend marriage sparks fly. But I've always wanted to read like, what is it called? Like fake marriage? 
forced marriage something something about the marriage trope oh marriage of convenience that's what it's called i've always wanted to read marriage of convenience but we're gonna see because that is a major lie to tell and you're a matchmaker you want to make me a match and you lying about your husband so that one sounds interesting too it is 284 pages that's the sweet spot right there in the middle and it came out this year i have another arc that i plan to read this one comes out in november though so i'm gonna read this one next like this one's coming up right now my frosty fake christmas date by cassie bowen very excited about this one very thankful to receive this arc it says this book is fake dating forced proximity christmas clean grumpy sunshine and ex's ex best friend it comes out november 18th of this year and it follows julie cooper she's almost 30 she's a rancher's daughter sunshine but dreads christmas fiercely awkward sometimes tough as nails and tucker madison he's a perpetual grump aged out foster kid oh i love that foster care 31 year old self-made rancher fiercely loyal used to be wild oh that sounds good every holiday season my family puts on the largest christmas eve party in our small town and every year i'm reminded of my ex-fiance and how long it's been since i've brought along a date well this year is going to change when i run into my ex's old best friend tucker madison i strike a deal with him that he can't resist he agrees to play my swoon worthy love struck boyfriend as long as i set him up to pitch a business deal to my father then at the end of the holidays Tucker can dust off his hat and ride away to the sunset it's perfect except for one small problem he's not nearly as insufferable as I remember beneath his frosty exterior and even icier blue eyes is a man who might hold the key to helping me find love again yes my light just went out with him but just when I think my unplanned feelings are the only problem our secret agreement is suddenly on the brink of being outed how could I lose my family's trust Tucker could lose his livelihood and we both might lose our chance at real love this is not what I asked for this christmas and it's giving cowboy it's giving clean it's giving fake dating why for christmas everybody want a fake date why is all the christmas books fake dating that's hilarious but very interesting so once again that is an arc so i'm probably going to read this one next but i think those are the books that are going to be my clean christian closed door christmas romance that is my tbr those are the books that i'm definitely going to try to get to i might add something else in but my slate is already pretty full with those books along with work and then i have one more book for the book club but they didn't pick what they want to read yet so i don't know what it's gonna be i'm definitely gonna let you guys know i hope you all are enjoying the holiday season don't let it pass you by cherish every moment you have with your family members go out do things don't get stuck at work be festive don't let this time pass you by cherish it yeah let me know what you guys are currently reading let me know what was the last book you read and do you have a favorite christmas book okay do you like to read holiday romances are you in the mood like that i'll be in the mood like i started reading holiday romances in october or september i believe yeah but that is all for this video i hope you all enjoyed it i will be seeing you guys in next week's video it's gonna be a hair video i'll see you then